Hello! So, Pandora then. In Greek mythology, Pandora was the first woman created by the gods. We know of that story of Pandora's box, where she opened a big jar which was crammed full of all the evils of the world for some reason. Seems a pretty stupid thing to keep in a jar. Anyway, she opened it up and all manner of monstrous evil was released, like plagues and diseases and downloadable content and those self-service checkout machines you get at the supermarket. Anyway, this isn't relevant, really, to uh, anything we're doing today. We're just looking at a device called the Open Pandora. Open, because it's all open source and lovely and all that. And Pandora, because that's its name. Here it is. It is a box. A black box. It looks a bit like a DS, doesn't it? And I'll tell you what, it's about the same size too. In fact, here's a 3DS for comparison. Mmm, boxy. It's enough of that. Now, <clears throat> you may be wondering exactly what this is. It looks like a DS, but it certainly is not. In fact, here's a thing. It's a full Linux PC. Yes, really. A tiny little full computer. Would you like to know the specifications? Here we go then. It's got an ARM Cortex A8 600 MHz plus CPU. Um, there's some sort of DSP in it, uh, 430 MHz if I remember. Why didn't I write this down? It's got some sort of um, Power VR OpenGL compatible graphics going on. Uh, the screen is 800 by 480 pixels, as I'll show you in a moment. Uh, it's got built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, does USB and that. Um, i trying to think what else. Uh, everything else we will see as we go through it. So there we are. There's some meaningless specs from a device you haven't seen opened as yet. And I'll tell you what, there's something else I've got to tell you. It's a British invention! <gasps> Seriously, this is a project from only a few people, um, so hence you won't find it in the shops. Uh, in fact, you have to order it from the manufacturer direct. I'll put a link in the uh, info box thing below. Um, yeah, in fact, I've been sort of following this for a while. Um, it's been in development for years. Uh, pretty much everybody thought it had basically succumbed to the curse of vaporware and would never exist. But obviously it does exist. Here's one, and you can buy them, and they ship them to you, and they're all real and that. So yeah, it's a British invention. <gasps> Everything about it was designed, made, and assembled in the UK, with the exception of the main PCB, which apparently was made by Texas Instruments. Presumably in Texas, because uh, nobody in the UK does much stuff with the ARM processors. Uh, even the casing, which was originally made in China, is now made in the UK. <sighs> Marvellous. I think this calls for a bit of patriotism. Ah, sorry, that was the wrong one. That's more like it. Right then, let's have a look at the unit itself. The first thing you will notice is, unlike every other electronic device made these days, it's not shiny piano black. It's a matte black colour. <gasps> Amazing! It actually looks slightly different. And unfortunately, as a result, slightly cheaper. It's uh, without the sort of shiny finish. Uh, for demonstration, well, shiny, nice, mm, less shiny, nice. On the plus side, though, it of course doesn't have fingerprints stuck all over it the femtosecond you get it out of the packaging. And also it doesn't attract dust across from the other side of the street, like everything Piano Black seems to do. So there we are, it's probably more practical. OK, let's have a look at the device itself. Do you know what uh, actually occurs to me when I look at this? It's kind of the opposite of an iPhone or an iPhone Touch or an iPad. Do you know those things have no buttons at all, do they? And no expansion or anything. This takes somewhat the different approach. You, as you will already have noticed, twin SD card slots. Power switch, headphones, volume control. Nothing on this side, nothing on that side, nothing underneath except the battery. Stylus. Oh yeah, we've got us a touchscreen coming. And look at the back. We've got left button and right buttons like a joypad. Ooh. Also, mini USB. I think you can charge it over that if you want. Uh, that's some sort of TV out, I believe. Don't have the lead for that. A power input. And, of course, full-size USB port. <gasps> Marvellous. So you can even plug in USB memory sticks and have more storage on this device than you previously thought possible. Maybe you could plug it into a huge hard drive and then not be able to carry it round. That would be clever. Also... Some LEDs up there to show you what's going on like. Just show you the other things that came in the box before we actually open her up. A Pandora quick start guide. 
Mm, start quickly. Disappointingly, it's all in proper English, so I won't bother having a look at that. And a mains adapter. And that's it. No fancy packaging or boxes. Remember, small project. And now, do you like buttons? I heard you like buttons and controls. You're in for a treat. Yes. <clears throat> Screen. Stereo speakers. Full QWERTY keyboard. Dual analog sticks. Hear that PSP? Well, I shouldn't call them sticks, should I? Um, nubs? Yeah, let's call them nubs. Control pad and four buttons and, of course, the mighty shoulder buttons at the back there. Now, um, what do these control like, I suppose you're asking? The D-pad is excellent. It's one of the nicest I've used for bloody ages. And the little analogue nums are very nice as well. They are better than the PSP one, although I would have said not as good as the one on the 3DS. Wow. Let's look at that. I told you. Logical inverse of an iPod Touch. How many more buttons can we get in this thing? Must control everything. And you will see why, because of course it is a full Linux PC, but also it has something of a special tangent for itself in retro gaming. Yes, part of the idea of this is to run emulators and run lots and lots of old games on the move. Tell you what, let's have a look at some. Okay, here it goes starting up, loading itself. This is release one of the firmware called Zaxxon. There we are, even that's named after an old groovy game. Up it comes, yum -ba -dum -ba -dum, powered by Angstrom, which is a form of Linux, I believe. I presume you pronounce that word Linux, Linux? You know, I've never heard anybody say it out loud. Hmm, clearly I've not been watching nerdy enough videos. Right, where are we? Oh, blimey, it's focused on its own lens! <laughs> Calm down, dear. Wow, that was troubling. How absolutely horrible. You get to see all the horrible bits of fluff and everything that are on the lens. Ooh. Anyway, that's completely irrelevant and nothing to do with this rather nice machine we're having a look at. OK, here's what it boots into as per standard. It's kind of a front end just for uh, showing off and running all your different softwares and selecting them quickly. Because, you know, you're on the move. You haven't got much time. Time is money. You're fired, Jones, and all that kind of stuff. Now then, you may have noticed there's an awful lot of uh, things pre-installed on this card, because I've been playing with this thing quite a lot recently. Right, uh, where shall we start? I tell you what, let's ignore this completely, actually, and as a matter of interest, bring up this little selecty menu here, which enabled us to run another graphic user interface. Ooh, how exciting. I would like the full desktop environment, please. Uh, problem with filming in the dark is I can't see where the enter button is. Ah, here it is. Blink. And now it goes all like this. And you get yourself a proper desktop with access to everything. And you can run all the programs from this if you should want. And also uh, install things and move things around and manage files and connect via wireless, blah, blah, blah. Basically, this is where you're going to do all the standard computery stuff. I'm more interested in the emulators, but I thought I'd better show you this. OK, and you can also, of course, move the uh, mouse point around with an analog stick, or, far more importantly, use the stylus on the touchscreen. This is why this probably doesn't have a capacitive... a capacitive touchscreen, because you'd never have a finger small enough to actually click on these tiny icons. But it is, of course, very easy with the lovely stylus. Right, I'm going to boot this back to the... Uh, other front end. Log out, please. Thank you. Yeah, um, as you may notice, it will run the vast majority of Linux type stuff um, as long as it runs in a small screen. The emulators tend to have more, um, how shall we put it, optimized versions. Sorry, just trying to remember what the password is. There we are. And we're back in, nice and quick. Right, let's have a look over some of the stuff we've got on here. I probably won't run much of it, or we'll be here all day, but there's Battle for Wesnoth, which is a very nice um, turn-based strategy thing. I've got that for my iPhone, I think. It's a very good game. Uh, Chromium is a browser. Yes, this does web browsing. And there's also an accelerated Flash plugin on the way, apparently, which will uh, make Flash a much nicer experience than it is at the moment. Although, to be honest, it seemed to run all right for me, um, although I didn't try playing any games or anything. Here's something that excited me, a full version of Chaos Strikes Back and Dungeon Master that they've ported across, ooh, based on the assets of the Atari ST version. Oh, all right, I'll load it quickly. <laughs> I love this. I don't love that background that says, please log in. I find that confusing. Right, hang on, we'll need the mighty touchscreen for this. Bing, 
Um, ooh, I would like to go in the dungeon. Not in real life. That would be horrible. Oh, I'm going to touch it again, I think. Here we are. Enter. I don't know if you've ever played Dungeon Master. This was a very, very, very popular game in the 80s. Late 80s, I believe. On the Atari ST, there was also an Amiga version, which I believe was slightly better. Oh, blasphemy. What happens is, you wander around this dungeon, and then you have to find some uh, lost souls who are stuck in paintings for some reason. Here's one. I think he's called Iedo, if I remember. Oh yes, there he is. And you can resurrect them into your band, and you pick which four ones you like and go off to try and stop the evil Lord Chaos, who is doing naughty things. It's a bloody excellent game. But we don't have time to go into it now, so we'll look at the picture of uh, Zed, I believe that is, and then kill ourselves by repeatedly banging our heads into a wall. And that is the next sequel to Lord of the Rings. Tell you what, I'm going to put the volume up a little bit. There we are. Am I putting it up or down? I can't tell. Well, I'll tell in a moment when we play something else with sound. Right, what else have we got going on? All sorts of technical things for CPU speed and goodness knows what. Yes, there's a version of Doom, and no, I'm not going to run it. It's Doom, you know what Doom looks like. Everything runs Doom. Everything from calculators to guinea pigs. Right, lots and lots of emulators. Hee, we'll get back to that. Oh, a lovely version of Lemmings. Mmm, I like Lemmings. If you don't know what Lemmings is, go off and learn. We haven't got time to go through it now. Um, all various other things, all standard... Uh, you know, Linux uh, devices that you've seen before, and by devices I mean programs. That was confusing. I found where is one down here? It's a version of something I bloody hate. There it is. Bloody Rick Dangerous. I hate Rick Dangerous. This is a game from the 16-bit era of uh, home computers in the UK, which is very fondly remembered. The strange thing is, it's rubbish. I mean, I really hate Rick Dangerous because it's just a bloody memory test. It's completely unfair. You go in a screen... Well, actually, let's show you. I can't believe I'm playing this. It's got really nice graphics and funny sound, though, so that's all right. OK. Rick Dangerous crash lands his plane, blah, blah, blah. Here he is. Little Indiana Jones pastiche at the start. Oh, no, the boulder's coming. Don't worry, we've gone to the side and jumped out of the way. And killed the funny man. Ha ha ha. The only thing I liked about this game is that inexplicably his melee attack is to poke people with a stick. I can never get too much of that. Hooray! Ha 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 ha. Now I shall collect this lovely thing here. Marvellous. Do you know why I didn't jump up a bit higher? Because that thing there spits a spear in your face and you instantly die. Irritating, isn't it? Just wait for this. Oh, I can't be bothered. Go down this far one and you're safe. Dum -da -dum -da -dum. Dum -da -dum. Oh, I couldn't see that because the screen hadn't scrolled down. Gyr, bloody Rick Dungeon. The whole thing, there are frequent parts where like spikes, which are completely invisible, pop out of the ground and kill you. And you had no way of knowing they were coming. And the only way to get past it is to have played it before and remembered where it is. Ask me is a pathetic excuse for a game. Games are about reactions and fun, not just remembering things. Anyway, let's go on and look at some other icons. I do apologise, by the way, if the screen is low quality, but uh, that's a camcorder poking at a screen for you. In hindsight, I probably should have got the TV out lead. Hmm. Never mind, I haven't got one. Right, a version of Spotify, which is the lovely uh, streaming music service in the UK. Uh, you, to use that, though, you will need a mobile account. Anyway, enough of this. Time for some emulators. So yeah, emulation. Oh, playing the games of my youth on the move. This is what excites me about these things. Now, you may remember in the past I've had various devices which did this to varying degrees, like that Dingu console, which wasn't very good. Uh, the most effective thing I've ever owned for portable emulation was, of course, a hacked PSP, which was pretty good, but nowhere near as comprehensive and effective as this, as we shall now go into in tedious attention to detail. Right. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat's very bad today. Right, what we got? GNG. EO. That'll be Neo Geo. Yes, it emulates the Neo Geo perfectly. Couldn't get any more perfect unless a Neo Geo itself came out of the second SD card slot. 
Doesn't do that, unfortunately. A bit of a design flaw there. Maybe something for a revised version in the future. Um, yeah, I'm not going to show it to you. We've all seen it before. You know what it's like. Tell you what, I haven't seen before on the move effectively, though. The Atari ST. Oh, yeah. Let's load this thing up. One of the things I hate about this emulator is it's very difficult to get it to go full screen. Oh, I lied. Right, what have we got then? Check out the floppy disks. Um, no, not Nightwalk. Oh dear. We have a tie in with terrible old games you've probably never heard of there. We want Disk, please, which is an excellent game. Okay, back to main menu. Uh, oh, actually, I think I'm going to have to uh, redefine the keys because uh, I was messing about with this this morning. There we are, much better. Back to main menu. Reset machine, please. Thank you. You can get rid of that annoying status bar at the bottom. I can't be bothered at the second. Right. Copy this disc with two sides, ten sectors, 79 tracks. <laughs> Sorry, I just had an immense um, uh, sort of nostalgia hit there. Right. L'Oriciel. Excellent French game makers. Look, it's some weirdos air guitaring and spinning around. The game is actually pretty much Discs of Tron, but a very, very good version. Okay, here we go. Copyright 1990. All those years ago. One player, I pick Yee Yee, because he has an amusing name. Although not as amusing, amusing as Zappy, actually. <laughs> Let's go over here. Oh, I remember these people. I haven't played this for years. Um, it's like a leaderboard thing where you go up and... Uh, beat these people at the disc game, eventually getting up to Eagle, who is virtually impossible. The bastard. Right. Oh no! I've been a silly. Hang on. Let's quit out of that. That was the training mode. I forgot the whole point of the training mode is it's just kind of training the disc mechanics. You don't actually have anyone to fight against, therefore not very interesting. I challenge Weird, because he's the easiest. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Here we go. Oh yes. What happens is, you throw the little discs, and each of the uh, panels behind the twitching man, who is my opponent, um, reduces in power until it makes a big hole, and eventually falls down a hole and dies. The other way to do it, of course, is to hurl the disc directly at him. Normally, if he was a competent opponent, he would be reflecting it back at me and changing it to his colour so I couldn't catch it. Ooh, nearly fell the back there. Oop. Oh, no, it's his colour. There we are. That's reflected that. Back to me. And, woof. Oh, yes. I tell you what, mate. You ain't gonna win. Oh. Well, you might do if I keep doing that really badly. Ha ha ha! Now he's stuck on a limb. And, more importantly... Running out of energy. I'm sorry, let's stop playing this now, shall we? <laughs> Just it's a really good game I haven't played for a very long time. Anyway, the whole point is, Atari ST emulation, perfect. Press the old home button and it takes us straight back out. Um, what have we got next? Um, how about a bit of MAME? We always come back to the multiple arcade machine emulator in the end, don't we? Um, bum, bum, bum. Where is it? Oh, there it is. MAME for all. B. Uh, what are we going to play on this? Uh, Street Fighter. My fancy. Actually. How about a bit of Shaolin's Road? I loved that game in the arcade. Uh, I hope I put it on here. Yes, I have. That'll be it. That's B to confirm. Yeah, yeah. I do own a Shaolin's Road arcade jammer board. Honest. Actually, I do. <laughs> That's entirely true, but uh, I haven't got it plugged into anything. Right. If you ever saw this in the arcade, you were really in trouble. It meant you lost your coin. Ha ha! Kick! I'm very good at this. Well, I used to be 400 years ago. Whee! You could clear out whole um, screens with that. If you did it properly, unlike the way I just did. Oh, magic spit. Here we go. Eat my phlegm. Now there's some noodles. Kick the noodles for points. You know, just like real life. I tell you what, <clears throat> I think we're going to have to quit that or I'll play it all night. 
Um, actually, we should watch something else a bit more involved from that, just to show how well the emulation works, I suppose. Um, I've forgotten where it was now. There we are. Mm, tell you what, the new Mortal Kombat's just been released. Let's play the original, why not? Uh, Mortal Kombat... Revision. I want to play Revision 4. You'll probably find it's the one that doesn't work or something. Oh, no, it seems to be alright. That's a start-up sequence or horrible things gone wrong. I genuinely don't know. Oh, there's a start-up sequence. Oh no, this takes ages. i tell you what this means. Jump cut to when it starts. Okay, here we go. Coins, please. I don't know why I put, always put in so many. I think because I like to pretend I'm wasting magic 10 Ps. Right, it'll have to be Johnny Cage. He's the only one whose fatality is dead easy to do. I cannot feel battle plans. Oh, that'll be block then. That'll be high punch. That'll be low punch. I can't remember his moves. What's that one? Uh, the... Ah, yes. There we go. I think you could combo that if you got it right. Oh yes, go on to seven uppercut. That's what we're all here to see. Oh. <sighs> With no uppercut. Nobody's a winner if there isn't an uppercut. Go on then. I'm hearing a rumour once that apparently Jean-Claude Van Damme uh, was originally going to play Johnny Cage or something, but it fell through. I don't know if that's true or not. You swine! Right. This calls for extreme measures. Oh. <coughs> or maybe just fling some snot in his face. Either way, it works for me. Come on, then. Oh, blimey. This isn't very easy to play from this angle. That's my excuse, anyway. And I'm going to stick with it. Come on. Spinny, 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 trippy, trippy. Yep, the old AI on the first computer combatant, never too good. Aha! Right. Here's what we all came to see. The wrong button! Hooray! He was supposed to punch his head off. <clears throat> Let's stop playing that in disgrace, shall we? <clears throat> I apologise to everyone who has ever lived. Right, Nintendo 64 emulation. Oh, there's a new one. I actually want to go into the special emulator folder where I can find it easier. Mupen 64 Plus. You are trying to set the CPU clock to 850, which is above its specification of 600. Doing so may burn down your house, sour milk, or just blow up. Okay, not that likely. Proceed. Hmm, bit of a worry, that. Don't worry, it's just a joke. I hope. Right then, enter. Now, it takes a bit of fiddling to find the ROMs on this one. So we shall go to File, Open ROM. ROMs. There we are. That wasn't too bad, was it? Blast Core, one of my favourite games on the N64. Oh, I really wish there was an Xbox Live HD remix of that or something. But there isn't. As with so many rare games, it's just kind of lost. Goldeneye 007, Super Mario 64. Go on, just a bit of Super Mario. If only so we can see that bit where his freakishly disembodied head looks around at twinkling stars. Shut up, we've heard it before. There it is! Hello! You're not frightening at all, are you, you rubber-faced goon? Fantastic. Do you know, I remember when this was impressive. <sighs> well, it's as impressive from the point of view of emulation, but there we are. Press start. Okay. Yeah, that'll do. Okie dokie. Ugh. Looks like she's been slapped together out of some balsa wood. Uh, sounds a bit iffy. Toadstool peach? That doesn't sound very really nice. Well, for some reason she's baked a cake which involves him having to... Oh god, I've forgotten that thing. Um, involves him having to go to a castle. Couldn't she just sent it to him? She's supposed to be a princess. She's probably got all people doing post and all sorts of errands for her. Anyway, let's make use of some dual analog nubs, shall we? No way to skip this. 
Oh, I've forgotten all this. This is the... Uh, oh, look! It's in 3D and impressive bit, isn't it? And that's a weird plumbing system where you have giant pipes that just appear out of the floor. Whatever. More pipe. Blah, 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 blah. Here he is. Oh, that'll do the fall over button. <clears throat> hey! Whee! Oh, I remember this game and what fun it was. I also remember it more recently from the uh, dreaded version they released for the DS. Anyway, as you can see, the emulation is pretty good, though the sound is a bit off. But unfortunately, this is pretty much the only N64 game I've got to work with it. Uh, Goldeneye ran so slow it just went weird, and Blast Core I can't get to run at all, though that may be a ROM dump problem. So, this is a bit of a work in progress. Don't buy it for uh, immediate N64 emulation, because you may have to wait a little bit, or maybe it will never work completely. Who knows? I can't predict the future. If I could, I'd be picking next week's lottery numbers and using the proceeds to buy a new sofa. Right, um, tell you what else would be nice to emulate. How about one of them their PlayStations? Hmm. This is something the PSP was particularly good at, because of course it had sort of inbuilt running PS1 game stuff. So it's nice to see something else. What have we got? Silent Hill? No. Ooh, Wipeout, yeah, that'll do. We like a bit of Wipeout. But only a very small bit. I get bored of it very quickly. Whoops, <clears throat> sorry. Right. It's a James Bond thing with a Psygnosis logo. Oh, now it's all gone cyber. And we've got a bigger Psygnosis logo. And another little one appeared then. That was a good bit for a fan of Psygnosis logos. Hmm, I love my DR. If they're a company called Design Republic, why is their logo so bad? Anyway, let's skip all this, Tut. Skippy, skippy. We just want to see how well the game runs. Here we go. Press start. Oh, man. You forget how long it takes to start modern games, don't you? <laughs> I remember when everything was on cartridge and you pressed one button and instantly everything worked. Oh, go on, just whatever. I don't care. What's that one? He's got blue on his ship. Data loading. Hold tight. Well, what else am I going to do? Hold loose. Location Canada. Wow, I wonder if it really exists. Probably not, due to the fact it's a futuristic, whimsical fiction. Right. Go! Thank you. Can we change it? Ah, there we are. You have to have an external view when you're showing a your game off to people. Everybody knows that. As you can see, PlayStation. I apologise. As you can see, PlayStation emulation is very good on this. It looks like a PlayStation. What more do you want? Do you know, it just occurred to me. I remember when this was in development, they said uh, there was a Dreamcast emulator in the works for it, and they had sort of an early version running. And I must say I haven't heard anything about that recently, and haven't even found it to download, so I imagine that didn't come to pass for one reason or another. Pity. Oh well. That's enough of this. Oh, Alright. We'll just wait for him to land, because that was quite exciting. Right. PlayStation emulation, very good. What's next? Mega Drive emulation. Oh, who cares? Everything can emulate a Mega Drive. Even a cat with a hat on. Well, probably not literally. But hey, I haven't got a pet cat, so, you know, I couldn't say for sure. Although, actually, I will run it, because... Um, yeah, loading you wrong. Nope. Oh, something playing Sonic CD. Look, also does the Mega CD. Ah, Sonic CD, what a game. It does have 32X emulation. And I happen to know that uh, old Virtual Racing runs quite nicely. Sega Sports. Back in the day when they had consoles and stuff. That was a very farty noise. Deluxe. Time attack. Two players. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'll just go for it. Good God. Prototype. That looks like a drawing of a sports car by a very young child. I'll have a stock car, please. Yeah, whatever. Something I liked about Virtua Racing was it had, like, loads and loads and loads of really cool, um, different camera angles. You could have one which was miles up in the air. Oh, <clears throat> wrong button. Sorry. Um, ah, here we are. Whoa! What have I done? Oh no, that's some sort of quick... <laughs> 
I've quickly loaded in a save state from another game, look. Oh dear. Um, yes, well, that's the end of my stock car fan. That was very strange. It was like the world ended and was replaced by a faster one. How do you... No, no, don't overwrite the save. I can't remember how you... Um... Oh, X, no. Why isn't N no, you silly? What's going on? I've broken it. Oh, no. Oh, here we are. Um, oh, I'm in that X button. Oh, excuse me, looks like it's stuck to my arm. There we go. Right, uh, how do we change the old... No, that's not it. When I was playing this before, I was changing camera angles like nobody's business. Now I can't... Ah, here we go, look. It was me being silly. I think all racing games should be played from this view. In fact, I would like a camera fitted to a balloon above my car so I can actually drive my real car like this. So I don't have a real car, but if I did... I would drive it from a remote balloon. This is probably why I don't have a car, because I'm an idiot. Right, let's stop that and go on to something else. SNES emulation! Yeah, it emulates the SNES pretty much perfectly. Well, in fact, perfectly as far as I can work out. Let's not bother showing that. We all know what a Super Nintendo was. Um, what else have we got? Oh, yes, this is interesting, I say. Have a look at... Dum, 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 dum. UAE for all. I believe this is the first handheld which can emulate the Commodore Amiga at full speed. Ooh, exciting. Right, I'm going to have to get the old uh, touch screen on the go for this one. Yeah, that's fine. Get on with it. Right, select image disk. That'd be nice. Uh, to the menu, I've pressed the wrong button. Ah, now this is where we hit a bit of a problem with the old Pandora here. As all the emulators are made by different people, there's no unifying um, direction on which button does what. So if you're in an emulator and you want to select something or quit something or whatever, it's quite often different buttons to the emulator you used last. So as a result, it gets very confusing. Oh, Speedball 2, now we're talking. Um, now let's take over Turrican 2, I think that was a bit more technically impressive, wasn't it? In its way. Run! Start up. I'll just press start. That's probably easier. I'm going to drop the stylus now before it gets embedded in my hand. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't want to cheat. What do you think this is, eh? Start game at level one. That would be nice. As opposed to starting at level five and then wondering why you haven't bothered to play the game. One problem, incidentally, with meager emulation is it tends to be a bit slow on the old loadings it has to emulate the disk drive at a realistic speed, generally. Oh yeah, funky music. Sorry, that's probably very distracting from your point of view. Yeah, I'm on. And... Here he is! Yay! Shoot the thing. Pick the thing up. Three-way. It's a little green thing that follows you and kills you, you know. It was all over the 16 bits. The thing I remember, mo the thing I remember most about Turrican is if you hold down the fire button, flamethrower thing, hooray! And you can destroy the ground with it and pretend you're doing gardening. Ah, yeah. Anyway, as you can see, the Amiga emulation is superb. It's uh, in fact spot on, as far as I can tell, and everything runs beautifully, which is damn impressive. Yeah. Oh no, the dog's upset. Right, tell you what. Let's stop the Amiga thing, now I've proved it worked, and I shall go off and see to the dog. Back in a second. There we are, that's him sorted out. He was upset by a man who was trying desperately to shove a leaflet through our letterbox. And not doing a very good job of it, actually. How could you be rubbish at sticking leaflets through letterboxes? You can't get the staff these days. Anyway, you can get Vectrex emulators for handhelds, apparently, and here is one. The Vectrex being a fairly obscure and very old console from the early 80s, which came with a built-in display. It was effectively like a big television. Um, two interesting things about it were, number one, it only displayed vector graphics, and number two, rather than being in a sort of widescreen standard television display like you see these days, it was in portrait, a very uh, tall and thin screen. Very odd. Um, emulation of it, to be honest, isn't that great on anything, for the simple reason that nothing has the weird vector display that came with it, and it doesn't look right when you sort of try and recreate it, really. But this does as good a job as anything I've ever seen. Go on, let's road armour attack. That's a fairly standard one. Here we are. You'll notice the overlays. 
The Vectrex was black and white, and to give the illusion of colour... <laughs> it, <laughs> this sounds so ridiculous saying it now, but it was so cool back in the day. Um, it's kind of had these overlays you put on that just were a sheet of translucent plastic that gave the illusion of colour. Yeah, anyway, here's Armour Attack. Um, this is difficult to control for the simple reason that it, of course, has to use the screen in uh, portrait in order to make it more realistic. Here we are, driving around my little Jeep. Can you actually see this? Yep, you can. Shooting gigantic missile. I don't know what weapon this Jeep has. It beats the shit out of those tanks, though, I'll tell you. And it will hit um, aircraft as well. Nifty. Anyway, this isn't a good way to experience the Vectrex, frankly, from my point of view. I do have an original Vectrex, which I will be making a video of at some point over the upcoming weeks. Oh, it's something I love from my childhood. My friend had one. We didn't, because they cost 11 bajillion pounds. Anyway, back to the point. Um, what else can we emulate? Commodore 64! Don't really need to show you that one, I think. Commodore 64 being an old 80s computer, lots of things can emulate that perfectly. What else have we got then? Oh, Game Boy Advance. Yes, Game Boy Advance. We all know what they look like. Lots of things emulate it, blah, blah, blah. In fact, you can even get kind of rip-off Game Boy Advances on eBay, I notice, that come with a load of um, games pre-installed. Don't know what they're like. I found one and have a look in the future. Um, what else have we got? Uh, GPFCE. According to my list of what I've written, I can't remember what that is. Oh, it's that one. Pretty clearly, that's an NES emulator. Not going to bother with that. I think you all know what NES games look like. Come on, where's a rare or weird one? Oh, here we go. Race. Race emulates one of my favourite handhelds of yesteryear. The mighty Mio... Neo Geo Pocket Colour. <laughs> and what Mio Geo is, that's a special handheld for cats. Um... Where is it? If I remember, this bizarrely doesn't appear under games or emulators, which is very confusing. Where is it? Where are you? We're coming for you. We've found you! Oh man, I love that. Right, um, we're going to play SNK vs Capcom, The Match of the Millennium, which is a fantastic little fighter, which you probably haven't seen, I would imagine. Or maybe you have. Maybe you wrote it. I don't know, but most people haven't seen it, so stop moaning. This is one of those things with super deformed characters where they have giant noggins. But don't let that put you off, it's really good. Go on, let's get quickly into it. It has a bizarre Olympic mode where you can do strange um, events in order to sort of earn points which you can use to unlock extra characters and moves and stuff. It's a really nice, fully featured game. Go on, let's have a quick... Um, Game. Oh, hang on. No, that's the wrong thing. Versus mode is when you're fighting somebody else. Sparring, that's what I want. Time. Infinite time. We always have infinite time. What do you think this is? We're not wimps. No pain. No pain. No gain. England at noon. That sounds fair. Start. I'll go for average. Um, I'll be Zangief! Because he's got a giant finger. Who should we fight against one of the Neo Geo boys? How Maru! Because he's clearly cheating by bringing along a sword, and therefore needs to be beaten up. Yeah, we know where we're going. Here we go. To be honest, the only reason I've selected Zangief is I haven't seen fully how good this D-pad is for the old 360 degree throws. We shall now find out. Punch! <laughs> yep, pretty effective with the pile driver there. Pretty effective with the double suplex thing. Yeah, I think actually this is quite good. Oh, he hit me with a stick. Right, that's it. That's the end of that then. <laughs> oh man, I spent so much time playing this game in the past. It is excellent. Um, I'll quick show you one of the Olympic events. Actually, bizarrely, they are graphically more impressive than uh, the game itself. I think that was due to some weird backwards compatibility thing. They had like a monochrome version of the Neo Geo Pocket Colour. Um, I don't know what the story is with that. Oh, hang on, it couldn't be backwards compatible with it, could it? Because it wouldn't be able to play the one... Oh, I'm confused now! Let's just watch it. Um, ghost trick. Yeah, I remember this is based loosely on ghosts and goblins, as you will see. Ready, go. Oh no, it's an evil demon, or the Red Arama, as I think it's called. And basically, you nip backwards and forwards, 
picking up the dollar bags. And if you're very lucky, a treasure chest appears. And the further you go on, the quicker the demon gets, and you get multiple demons, and sometimes it rains down magic pies. Well, all right, I made the last bit up. This is dangerously addictive for something so simple, actually. Until you cock it up like that. Humph! Rubbish game! Right, let's emulate something else. Now, as you can see, the Neo Geo Pocket Color emulator is absolutely superb. And as not that many games were released for it, and they're all fairly small, you can just carry the whole lot around with you like some crazy loon from the future. Ooh, jump cut. I do apologise, but you probably don't want to hear me having a sneezing fit. Right, um, currently a few more to go through now. Uh, there's Scum VM, which enables you to play all the old uh, games like Monkey Island and Beneath the Steel Sky and all that. That runs pretty damn nicely. There's an Amstrad CPC emulator. That runs Amstrad CPC games pretty much perfectly. Old 8-bit machine. It's not news. Same goes for the ZX Spectrum. Really good emulator for that, actually. In fact, I think there's a choice of two. Um, and that only really remains for Hugo, the PC Engine emulator. Go on, let's have a quick look. Hugo. Hugh obviously being a reference to the Hugh cards, the uh, format it used for its games. I'll show you why I've got this. Uh, we've got an appalling game called Strip Fighter 2, which is kind of like Street Fighter 2, but with breasts. It's really not good. In fact, oh... I was going to say it's about as bad as it sounds. It's just occurred to me. I probably can't show you that on YouTube. Um, even if they are pixel, I'm not going to take the risk, actually. Oh, well. We'll have a quick look at Splatterhouse, then. It's not the same, though, is it? Oh, no. There's a crappy house with all the same windows near the world's worst drawn forest. Rain's nice, though. Oh, we'll get on with it. Yep. Because, bizarrely, massive gore is fine, but... Uh, a hint of breast is not. Slam. I never really understood the popularity of this game. It always seemed a bit sort of overly difficult and um, fiddly to me. But ooh. I forgot about the puking men chained up to the walls. Perhaps that's why they're there in the first place. Right, how do they go back in without leaving a trace? Tell me that. Also, wouldn't he have brought his own weapon and some shoes? I don't know. To each his own. A bit of 2x4 seems to be doing the work. Yep, now that is an interesting martial art <laughs> known as Flicky Leg. Right. I'm a bit bored of this already. Never got into Splatterhouse, really. All I can remember is seeing somebody else playing it in the arcade in a really cool bit with loads of uh, um, weird. Uh, Oh, this was allowed being hit. Um, sort of objects flew around a room like lamps and that, like you're being attacked by a poltergeist. That was pretty cool. Oh, don't drop your weapon, you great big twit. You haven't even climbed up the ladder, look. Oh, blimey. Oh, I remember this. This was incredibly hard, if I remember. Oh, I can't be bothered. Never a fan of the splatter house. Bye now. Don't let the door hit you in the arse on the way out. And there we go. That has pretty much exhaustively gone through all the emulators that I like, anyway. There's also a version of DOSBox, which enables you to play old PC games. And, uh, interestingly, I actually discovered a specific port of Jagged Alliance 2, which is rather nice. Oh, I'm emulated out. Quickly, to the conclusion! So then, that be the open Pandora, or a tiny fraction of its functions anyway. But it's a computer, you know what computers do. If you don't buy now, you're in trouble. Oh, and before anybody asks, yes, you can browse the web on it. Yes, you can look at YouTube on it. It's a computer. Right, off to the important bits we haven't mentioned yet. For instance, battery life, always the killer for a handheld. Now, here's the thing. Um, a device this small and with this much oomph to it, well, you can well imagine in your brain that it's not going to have a very impressive battery life. But your brain would be imagining wrong. This averages 10 hours, or in fact slightly more than 10 hours between charges. Yes, really. The guinea pigs didn't believe it. But you should. No, seriously. Um, what? Uh, the most I've got out of it is 11 hours. The least is about 10 hours, 5 minutes. And that was when I'd accidentally left the Wi-Fi connected. 
Uh, fantastic battery life, the longest battery life of any handheld device I have ever used. And that is saying something, it even beats out the iPad. This is obviously facilitated by the gigantic battery shoved up its bum. But yeah, that's excellent, because you don't want a handheld device you have to charge every two and a half hours, do you? Mentioning no names... <coughs> Right, moving swiftly on is the sticky wicket of price, because unbelievably, you have to pay money for it. I know, it isn't just delivered to your house by a naked woman. Bizarre. Clearly we elected the wrong governments if we're in this sort of bizarre situation. But yeah, how much is it? Well, it's not exactly going to kill your wallet, but it will give it a pretty hefty beating. £310, $500, or €365. Euros. Bear in mind, of course, small project, you don't have any of the reduced costs that come from mass manufacture. So if Nintendo was knocking these out, they could probably do it quicker. But they ain't. They're knocking out these. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah. So, quite expensive. Uh, considerably cheaper than an iPad and does an awful lot more, I suppose, is one way of thinking of it. But when something's expensive, we have to think of alternatives. And yeah, if you can think of an alternative, then well done. If you can think of a full Linux PC that's that big and lasts 10 hours on a single charge, good bloody luck to you. Can I come and live on your planet, please? Um, I suppose if you just want to run a few emulators, you can pick up a second-hand PSP for about 50 quid. Uh, that would be a fair plan, really. Um, although it's very fiddly to have the firmware hacked and that, it will get you uh, the majority of simple emulators and does the job quite nicely, but of course doesn't have all the other features of this and isn't as good at the whole emulation thing, well, blah 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 blah, but you're just taking advantage of the fact that second-hand PSPs are very cheap, really. And they can run PSP games, which are also very cheap at the moment. And also pretty much uh, pretty rubbish, but anyway, that's an argument for another day that we're all very bored of. So... What's my conclusion, ultimately? Well, I think this is a superb device, and I cannot recommend it highly enough, frankly. If you want one of these, and you can afford one of these, then bloody get one of these, why don't you? It really is that simple. In fact, it is criminal that the uh, gaming press in the UK has almost completely ignored it. Why? I can only imagine they are all literally Satan. It's the only example. Oh well, there you go. Pandora has opened her box, and what's inside it isn't evil. It's beautiful. <laughs>